Kendall and Kylie Jenner have their followers, but they've also got a whole lot of haters. Perhaps it's simply par for the course because they're rich, beautiful, and famous. However, some of the vitriol directed at these satellite Kardashians is the fault of their own pettiness and penchant for drama. Here are the stars who just can't stand the Jenner sisters. Everyone wants an excuse to, like, talk <laughs> Diddy Sean Diddy Combs is clearly not a fan of the Jenner sisters, which he made apparent after the 2017 Met Gala. Combs Instagrammed a photo of himself with Jaden Smith, Travis Scott, Wiz Khalifa, and Migos at the event with the hashtag Black Excellence. But it was later revealed that Combs actually cropped Kendall and Kylie out of the photo. Diddy never commented on why he did it, but Twitter reacted swiftly to the alleged snub, with many followers applauding the rap mogul. Danielle Cash Me Outside Brigoli Notorious viral sensation Danielle Brigoli apparently has a beef with the Jenner sisters. According to the Daily Mail, Brigoli mocked Kylie in her These Hoes video, featuring a Kylie lookalike getting injections all over her face and body. Brigoli also blasted Kylie on the cruise show, saying, but How do you go from lips the size of a twig and a body that looks like a paper clip, and now you look like an hourglass? <laughs> Kiki Palmer Actress and singer Kiki Palmer was somewhat sympathetic about Kylie's professed insecurities about her appearance, but Palmer doesn't approve of how Kylie went about gaining confidence, deeming her inauthentic. Palmer told Yahoo Beauty, In the situation with Kylie, a young girl people have seen on television since she was a kid, and they literally told her she was so ugly. She went and did apparently everything the world deems is beautiful. The even crazier part is that everybody loves her for it. The Original Supermodels Supermodel Naomi Campbell has made it abundantly clear that she's not impressed with the trajectory of Kendall's modeling career. Campbell addressed Kendall and other so-called Instagirls, telling Meredith Vieira, I just feel my generation of women like Cindy Crawford and Linda Vandalista, Chrissy Turlington, Claudia, we've worked so hard and we're still working at it, you know, and then it just comes like that for them. Supermodel Stephanie Seymour also weighed in, telling Vanity Fair, Supermodels are sort of a thing of the past. Kendall and Gigi are beautiful girls, and I support all of them, but they need their own title, Bitches of the Moment. That would be a good title for them. Model Rebecca Romaine had her own thoughts on Instamodels as well, telling ET, No one has proven yet that the numbers of followers translates to revenue. I know a lot of legitimate fashion people can't stand it. Hate it that these social media stars are now the supermodels in fashion. They are not true supermodels. Jeffree Star YouTube beauty guru and makeup mogul Jeffree Star started beefing with Kylie in December 2017 over her makeup kits. He began by criticizing her makeup brushes, tweeting, Are the new Kylie cosmetic makeup brushes made out of animal hair? Is that why they're so expensive? Bitch, I'm still dumbfounded. Star also accused Kylie of knocking off his brand, writing, I gotta know one thing. With all that f***ing money she's made, why did Kylie Cosmetics use the same packaging as my liquid lipsticks that have been out since 2014? Invest and make something different, maybe? That's some high-gloss shade being thrown around town. Amanda Stenberg Hunger Games actress Amanda Stenberg took Kylie to task in 2015 when the reality starlet posted an Instagram snap of herself with cornrows. Sternberg commented, When you appropriate black features and culture but fail to use your position of power to help black Americans by directing attention towards your wigs instead of police brutality or racism, hashtag white girls do it better. Kylie retorted, Amanda Stenberg, mad if I don't, mad if I do. Go hang with Jaden or something. Stenberg took Kylie's ex, Jaden Smith, to prom that May. Rihanna Insiders told OK that Rihanna beefed with Kendall over their mutual BFF, Cara Delevingne, because Riri felt like Delevingne ditched her for Kendall. A source told the mag, Rihanna finds it even more embarrassing because, to her, Kendall's just a talentless brat. A source also claimed that Rihanna wasn't thrilled with Kendall's friendship with Rihanna's abusive ex, Chris Brown. Selena Gomez Selena Gomez has had a frenemy relationship with Kendall and Kylie for years, reportedly stemming from Gomez's rocky on-again, off-again relationship with Justin Bieber. In April 2014, Gomez hung out with the Jenner sisters at the Coachella Music Festival. But according to a source in Us Weekly, at the time, Selena thought Kylie was in fact flirting with Biebs. Another source told Hollywood Life, Kylie sent sexy pics of herself to Justin and that's what started the fight. Selena saw the pictures on Justin's phone and she freaked out and left immediately. Sources told TMZ that Gomez dropped the Jenners because of their alleged drug use, drinking, and hard partying. The tab says the Jenners have denied those claims, noting that Gomez has a history of alleged substance abuse. Music industry icons 
In June 2017, the Jenner sisters unveiled a line of merch featuring their faces on top of images of musical icons, including Christopher Notorious B.I.G. Wallace, Tupac, The Doors, Pink Floyd, Metallica, Led Zeppelin, Kiss, and Black Sabbath. Biggie's mother, Valletta, slammed the girls on Instagram, writing, I have no idea why they feel they can exploit the deaths of Tupac and my son Christopher to sell a t-shirt. This is disrespectful, disgusting, and exploitation at its worst. The Jenners responded to the backlash, tweeting, We deeply apologize, especially to the families of the artists. We will use this as an opportunity to learn from these mistakes, and again, we are very sorry. But sorry wasn't enough. They would also face off against industry titans, Ozzy Osbourne and The Doors. Ozzy's wife, Sharon, tweeted a tee that featured Ozzy's likeness, writing, Girls, you haven't earned the right to put your face with musical icons. Stick to what you know. Lip gloss. And daughter Kelly Osbourne shared her thoughts as well. But the surviving members of The Doors made it official, sending the Jenners a cease and desist letter for using their image on merch. The letter read, the superimposing of a selfie on Kendall Jenner over the iconic lion portrait of the late Jim Morrison is offensive and remarkable for its failure to recognize the rights of the estate of Mr. Morrison to control the use of his likeness. Manager of the Doors and Morrison's estate, Jeff Jampol, told Rolling Stone, They're obviously attention-seeking missiles who crave celebrity and being well-known but don't actually do anything. It's the polar opposite of the artists that they're trampling all over. It's just spitting in the face and on top of art and message and soul and legacy. Metallica frontman James Hetfield, who was peeved at the Jenner's use of Metallica on their t-shirts, summed it up best, telling ET Canada, Show some respect. The world may be fixated on the ever-changing and salacious love lives of the Kardashian-Jenner siblings, but mum, Kris Jenner, has a pretty fascinating relationship history of her own. From a famed defense attorney to a former Olympian, her failed marriages have been full of cheating allegations and rumors that she married for money. We ain't saying she's a gold digger, but she has found a way to get involved in some pretty weird relationships. Here are all the strange things about Kris Jenner's marriages. They're making fun of me now, it's fine. But no one's making fun of you, you psycho. Oh, psycho. <laughs> All about the Benjamins? Kris Jenner's allegedly scheming ways apparently started at an early age. If you believe author Jerry Oppenheimer's recounting of her life story, The Kardashians and American Drama. According to the author, Jenner dated the late professional golfer Cesar Sanudo when she was 17 years old and he was 27. Then she met Robert Kardashian and reportedly cheated on Sanudo. I met Robert Kardashian. Ooh, hussy. Robert came over one day when Cesar was out of town. What? A friend of Sanudo's said, Chris saw a far better financial opportunity with Kardashian than with Caesar. Oh my God, you're such a whore. Now we know where we get it from. The couple tied the knot in 1978, and Jenna reportedly began draining Kardashian dry by making lavish purchases, including a $3,000 belt. Kardashian's former pastor told the author, I just sensed that Chris saw in Bob a kind of gold mine. Restless Housewife. According to Oppenheimer's book, Chris underwent a mummy makeover after giving birth to their son, Robert Jr. With her altered bod in place, Jenna allegedly went on a quest to regain the freedom she lost when she became a Beverly Hills housewife. An insider told the author, Chris was coming home at 2 and 3 in the morning drunk, and she would tell Robert, I have four kids and I have not lived life. A wandering eye. When she appeared on Fox News' Objectified, Jenna finally talked about her first marriage. I married Robert when I was 22 years old and had I got pregnant on my honeymoon. I had the happiest life I, you could have dreamt about. She admitted she was always looking for more. You are, sometimes people think the grass is always greener, and that was like what I think I went through at some point. That's when Jenna confessed to hooking up with a soccer player while she was married to the late attorney. When I look back on it now, probably one of my biggest regrets in my life is that that marriage fell apart. Out with the old hubby, in with the new. Radar Online dug up all the juicy details about Kris Jenner's 1991 divorce, including court documents where Robert Kardashian claimed Kris had immediately moved Caitlyn Jenner and her four children into the Beverly Hills home Kris once shared with Kardashian. 
Robert described an incident in which their son, Robert Jr., was asleep on a couch in Chris's bedroom. While Chris was in bed with Caitlin, he reportedly stated, In my opinion, the situation is detrimental to the children. Chris and Caitlin wed in April 1991, just one month after Chris's divorce was finalized. Friendly Exes Though the end of Kris Jenner's marriage to Robert had more drama than an episode of Keeping Up With The Kardashians, things between them smoothed out a bit after Kris married Caitlyn. Robert and I, at the end of his life, were best friends. And so was Bruce. Kris told HuffPost, Robert and I remained really, really close and had a really great parenting style with our kids. Then Caitlyn became really good friends with Robert, so we've always had a one big happy family kind of a relationship. Khloe Kardashian's throwback Thursday pic of Robert holding Kylie and Kendall Jenner is proof enough of the congenial situation. Neighborly Spouses Viewers of Keeping Up With The Kardashians could feel the tension between Chris and Caitlyn as their relationship fell apart. You can all go find a little getaway that you can go relax at. I'll look for a place. Everybody needs a little space. Chris was immersing herself in her children's careers, while Caitlyn was content with hanging out around the house. Honey? Where's mom? She just left. She just left? Rumors emerged in 2013 that the then couple's marriage was on the rocks. Chloe inadvertently spilt some tea when she told Jay Leno that Chris and Caitlyn were living apart. Um, they got another house, um, and Bruce stays there sometimes. I'm not for that. Is it that. in the same state? It's in the same state, yeah. yes. Yeah. Different city. Yeah. Four months later, Chris and Caitlyn announced via E! News that they had split after 22 years of marriage. Both mom and I seem to be very happy with the arrangement that we have right now. So, for the time being, we're going to keep the uh, beach house. Blast from the past. In Touch Weekly claimed that not only had Chris cheated on her first husband, she had stepped out on Caitlyn too with a former soccer player named Todd Waterman. Sound familiar? That's because Todd was also the man with whom Chris admitted to cheating on Robert. I had to meet up with Todd again. Explain to me why you saw this ass. Todd even made an appearance on Keeping Up while Chris was still married to Caitlyn and an insider told the mag it was allegedly Chris's way of keeping him quiet. And I see this guy that kind of looked familiar. Yeah. And I said to the instructor, who is that? And he goes, Todd Waterman. Chris denied both the later cheating allegations and the payoff, but Todd told In Touch that back when Chris first moved Caitlyn into her Beverly Hills home, we were still sleeping together when she started dating Caitlyn. I would have told him off. Wish I was there. 20 years later? Why would she even talk to him? Brand first, marriage second. With a divorce under her belt, you might think Chris would have put some hardcore effort into keeping things with Caitlyn afloat. But multiple sources confirmed that before the then couple was on the outs, Chris was way too preoccupied with attaining power and fame to be bothered by her then marriage. Mom! We're not just here to wait I'm on you. I'm coming, I'm coming. You're our manager, wait on us. We need to tell her she was about to be fired. What started out as a whirlwind romance between the once smitten couple went haywire when Chris and her family were tapped to appear in the long-running e-reality series Keeping Up With The Kardashians. An insider told People, Caitlyn never wanted the circus that came with the show. She just went along with it. It was fun at first, but then it started to run their lives. The source then added, Everything in Chris's life is about ratings. Caitlyn was never her priority and she was totally sick of it. Third time's a charm? As weird as her past marriages have been, we weren't surprised when Chris told Ellen she was hesitant about walking down the aisle for a third time, despite being in a relationship with road manager Corey Gamble since 2014. You know, I've done that twice and it didn't work out so well. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. You they never say know. try and try again. That's right, they do, don't they? Yeah. But during a game of Spill Your Guts or Fill Your Guts, host James Corden brought up the rock Jenna had been wearing on her ring finger. You've been spotted wearing a massive diamond ring on your wedding finger. Are you and Corey Gamble engaged? <laughs> Instead of flat out denying she was engaged to Gamble, Jenna played coy. I'm not going to answer. <laughs> if she does choose to go for number three, we wish her a happy and long-lasting marriage. Corey is such a great guy, and the kids really like him a lot.
Kris Jenner is more than just a TV mom. She's also the tie that binds the famous Kardashian and Jenner family together and catapulted her children into stardom. While it's hard to imagine her as anything but the all-powerful matriarch of the reality fam, there was, indeed, a time when Jenner was probably one of the few people in the world who actually cared about keeping up with the Kardashians. Here's what Kris Jenner was like before she became such a big-screen personality. Kristen Mary Houghton before she was a Kardashian or a Jenner, Chris was Kristen Mary Houghton, born in San Diego, California, to a middle-class family. Her parents divorced when she was seven years old, and Kristen and her younger sister Karen were raised by their mother MJ until she remarried. Due to her stepfather's business changes, Chris found herself moving around quite a bit, which is probably why she was so prepared for her busy lifestyle today. Come fly with Chris. These days, Jenner is accustomed to jetting around the world in private planes and flying first class. But she was once on the less glamorous side of the friendly skies. After graduating from high school, she worked as a flight attendant for American Airlines. Chris reportedly only held the job for a year, but given her flair for the extravagance, we can only imagine her safety briefing as nothing short of iconic. Oh, your shoulders. Yeah, right, yes, that's oh, what you're yeah. talking about. Woo! When Robert met Chris. Chris's romance with attorney Robert Kardashian was love at first sight. Well, at least, for him. Jenner reportedly met Robert at a horse racing track in California when she was just 17. Even though he was 11 years her senior and she reportedly rejected his initial proposal, the debonair lawyer was not deterred. Chris eventually accepted Robert's second proposal and the two wed in 1978 and had their four children together. Courtney, Kim, Chloe, and Robert. So began Chris's high-profile life. Consider her the original Real Housewife of Beverly Hills. An affair to remember. The Kardashian marriage eventually imploded, much to the detriment of her late ex-husband. The pair split in 1990 because, as she recounted in her 2011 memoir, she had an affair with animator and former soccer star Todd Waterman. Her book describes the tryst in nauseating detail, and the decision resulted in a messy divorce. We're talking cancelled credit cards messy. Jenner cites the dalliance with Waterman as her only regret in life. I think I have one regret and that was getting divorced. The Jenner Bunch Before the ink was dry on Chris and Robert's divorce papers, she went on a blind date with the Olympic gold medalist formerly known as Bruce Jenner. The connection was undeniable, and the two were married within a year. In fact, Bruce, now Caitlyn, had to meet with Robert and ask him to finalize the divorce before the pair could get hitched. But the group was eventually united, and they became step-parents to each other's eight children from previous marriages. Eventually, the couple would welcome their own pair of daughters as well, and with that, their family was complete, with Robert's blessings. Robert and I, at the end of his life, were best friends, and so was Bruce. I have some of the greatest pictures of him holding Kendall and Kylie as babies, and he was Uncle Robert. Trial of the Century the impact of the O.J. Simpson case on recent history is undeniable, which is why it's often referred to as the trial of the century. Interestingly, few people were closer to the drama than Chris. Not only was she good friends with the football star's murdered ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, but she also watched her ex-husband serve on the dream team of attorneys defending the man accused of killing her friend. Needless to say, the 1994 trial became a period of immense emotional turmoil for the entire family. During the high-profile televised trial, Chris, who was pregnant with Kendall at the time, actually sat in court wearing Nicole's hand-me-down maternity clothes. In another attempt to keep her friend's memory alive, Chris gave her first daughter with Bruce the name Kendall Nicole Jenner. Infomercial Queen we all know that Mama Jenner is an overachiever by nature, which is why she wasn't content with just being Bruce's wife. She chose to be his manager as well. She spent a good deal of the mid-90s negotiating her husband's endorsement deals and creating an assortment of highly profitable opportunities. From putting together press kits to booking speeches, she did it all. In 1994, the couple premiered a self-produced infomercial and launched a successful line of fitness equipment. Stay at home, Momager. Before she was producing sex tapes and booking Playboy shoots, Chris was just another stay-at-home mom with an uncanny ability to weave careers of gold for her kids. She pitched the idea for a reality show following her relatively unknown family to entertainer mogul Ryan Seacrest in 2007, and the rest is history. The high-powered momager has since literally trademarked the term that has marked her public life ever since Keeping Up With The Kardashians launched. If that's not showbiz savvy, nothing is. 
the Kardashian Jenners are absolutely everywhere. But one family member who seems to be a particular subject of attention is the youngest sister, Kylie Jenner. The starlet has monetized even the most ridiculous scenarios and has done more than a few questionable things. Thanks to her cosmetics line, Kylie Cosmetics, Kylie Jenner has successfully positioned herself as CEO of a billion-dollar empire. With so many people scrambling to buy her lip kits, they're known to sell out in minutes, but the company has been the target of some controversy also. Allure reported in 2016 that the makeup mogul was accused of repackaging older shades, with buyers even swatching the colors on their hands to show that they almost look identical. Then Kylie jacked up the prices and people weren't having it. To make things even shadier, the standards for the Oxnard, California factory workers at Kylie Cosmetics are allegedly atrocious. Radar Online reported that employees have been posting to Indeed.com about the, quote, sweatshop-like conditions of their jobs. Among the complaints, the pay is very minimal for the amount of work that is requested with no benefits. Work environment very uncomfortable. While this made headlines in 2016, similar complaints persisted all the way through the start of 2020. The Khloe Kardashian and Tristan Thompson scandal of 2019 had so much spilled tea, we were all drowning in it. It all started in February, when news broke that Thompson had cheated on Khloe with Kylie Jenner's now ex-BFF, Jordan Woods. As everyone got dragged into a tale of he said, she said, Jenner, of course, took her sister's side. Chatting to Khloe and Kim Kardashian on an episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashians, E! News reported that Kylie mentioned speaking to Woods when the news broke, saying, and I was just telling her, I'm like scared of you now, like that you're capable of waking up the next morning with a smile on your face. However, the star defended Woods when her sisters began gossiping back. Kim had posted an Instagram video where she was singing along to the lyrics of Brandy's Who Is She To You, seemingly throwing shade at Woods. In another episode of their reality show, a distressed Jenner called Kim and told her she saw the clip, saying, I just feel like the singing and the internet stuff, it's just not okay. I just don't think anyone deserves this. Jenner picked her sister's side by unfollowing Woods on Instagram, but she also found a replacement, Sophia Ritchie. The reason this is flat-out bizarre? Richie had been dating Scott Disick, the father of Kourtney Kardashian's three kids. They say ignorance is bliss, but that doesn't always hold true when you're a high-profile celebrity. Kylie Jenner came under fire for saying something pretty cringeworthy in a 2016 interview with Marie Claire. At the height of her wig obsession, the youngest Jenner boasted, I started wigs, and now everyone is wearing wigs. I just do whatever I want to do, and people will follow. Now, so her wig. It is not a wig. Shut oh, up. Sorry. That same year, Jenner was also called out for cultural appropriation. The starlet attended an Alexander Wang New York Fashion Week show wearing a yaki ponytail. The public immediately called her out for the look. Plus, in 2015, Amandla Stenberg rightly shamed the star for wearing cornrows in an online feud that turned ugly. It looks like not much has really changed for the life of Kylie alum. Daily Mail reported that Jenner posted a since-deleted Instagram in January 2020 to share one of her paper magazine outtakes, which saw her sporting twist braids. As the outlet explained, the star's hair was styled in twist braids, a style commonly used and popularized by black women. Of course, this didn't sit well, even if the shoot's photographers claimed the look was inspired by Gwen Stefani in Moby's 1999 Southside music video. Even at the height of her most accomplished Forbes moment, the starlet faced backlash. Social activist Brittany Packnett slammed the makeup mogul for making her billion-dollar empire, saying, Jenner is profiting off the exploitation of black women. In a tweet, Packnett declared, you can get on the cover of Forbes and be a young billionaire by selling the very features, style, and swag that black women have always possessed but got called ghetto for it. And notice, now that she's made her fortune, she'll exploit black culture and black people for as long as it's profitable and then return to the comfort of whiteness. It's not the only time Jenner has found herself in trouble over this very issue. In 2015, the reality TV celeb posted a photo to her Instagram page from a photo shoot that saw Jenner with dark makeup on, leading many commenters to accuse her of donning blackface. 
What's worse is that her since-deleted Instagram caption read, What I wish I looked like all the time. Maybe Jenner wasn't meaning to offend anyone, but a bit of awareness and understanding go a long way. In 2019, Kylie Jenner made headlines when she graced the cover of Forbes as the youngest self-made billionaire ever at 21 years old. The issue? Well, that's not entirely true. As celebrity net worth estimated, she's still technically off by $12 million. The public was so outraged at these self-made claims that Forbes had to go back and clarify their assessment, with Jenner doing damage control rounds. Speaking to the New York Times, the Kylie Cosmetics founder explained, I can't say I've done it by myself. If they're just talking finances, technically, yes, I don't have any inherited money, but I have had a lot of help and a huge platform. Kylie Jenner's cosmetics empire is continuously growing, and so much so that she decided to add a skincare line. Jenner launched her much-talked-about line, Kylie Skin, in May of 2019 and posted a video to her YouTube channel of the products in action. Start with my face wash, probably my favorite product in the line. It just makes my face feel so clean. With claims that she uses her products every day, fans were excited to get their hands on something that would get them that coveted Kylie Jenner glow. But a few days after the YouTube teaser went up, Jenner posted to her Kylie Skin Twitter account a video of herself using the cleanser again, this time without professional filming quality. In the video, as she takes the product and puts it on her face, she very quickly wipes it off, causing fans to realize the amount of foundation residue on the white towel. As Insider revealed, viewers criticized the starlet for not even knowing how to use her own products. It didn't seem to hurt her bank account, as the face wash still sold out online. Being a billionaire at such a young age, you'd think Kylie Jenner would be a bit more sensitive to those around her who aren't as wealthy. The starlet was criticized after an interview that Alex Rodriguez gave to Sports Illustrated, in which he detailed his experience sitting next to Kylie at the 2019 Met Gala. Arriving at the event with his date, Jennifer Lopez, Rodriguez dished, We had a great table. We had Kylie and Kendall. Kylie was talking about Instagram and her lipstick and how rich she is. The mention went viral, and Jenner took to Twitter to deny the claim, saying she only spoke about Game of Thrones with the athlete. The alleged incident seems a little bit ironic because a few months before the piece was published, the Life of Kylie star declared in an interview with Paper, I don't define myself by how much I have, I honestly don't wake up even thinking about it. While Rodriguez's claim is certainly cringeworthy, it's not the only time Jenner has come across as a bit insensitive. In August of 2019, the makeup mogul launched her birthday collection for Kylie Cosmetics. The theme of the line? money. The Australian bushfires that began in late 2019 were so horrifying that by the start of 2020, the country had to call for evacuations as a result of communities suddenly deemed unsafe. It's estimated that over 1 billion animals lost their lives in the fires. A-list celebs lined up to lend helping hands. Leonardo DiCaprio's environmental organization Earth Alliance donated $3 million. Ellen DeGeneres launched a GoFundMe campaign with a goal of $5 million to help the people, firefighters, and the animals of Australia. And Jenner? The social media starlet came under fire when she took to her Instagram story to mourn the animals affected by the bushfires. Her caption read, Over half a billion animals have been killed in Australia. This breaks my heart. The issue? The next day, Jenner posted a photo to her story where she posed in her $1,480 mink fur Louis Vuitton slippers. The backlash was savage, pushing Jenner to donate $1 million to relief efforts two days after her public slip-up. When Keeping Up with the Kardashians initially premiered in 2007, Kylie Jenner was only 10 years old. Coming into money at such a young age has led Jenner to being accused of taking things for granted, with some people even reporting that the young starlet has come across as just plain rude. A 2019 Harper's Bazaar Arabia article really drew a lot of attention to Jenner. The original article reported Kylie and Kris Jenner had come in for a shoot that promoted the mother-daughter duo's rising makeup empire. Although Kris was sick with the flu, the outlet praised her for being bang on time to the photo shoot politely greeting everybody on set and introducing herself. As for Kylie, Harper's Bazaar originally stated, 
It's at least 60 minutes later and late before Kylie pulls up in a silver Lamborghini Urus. No handshakes, no eye contact, straight to hair and makeup. You'd never guess that they were related. So have you been naughty or nice? <laughs> <laughs> Probably on the naughty list this year. We have a feeling Momager Chris had to do some damage control, as an updated version of the article erased all signs of Kylie's negative behavior, instead saying that the makeup mogul arrived, quote, shortly after her mother. Although Kylie Jenner and Travis Scott broke up in October of 2019, the pair was plagued by gossip that the rapper was being unfaithful months before they called it quits. According to TMZ, in March 2019, Jenner had allegedly accused Scott of cheating, having discovered evidence he cheated on her. But speculation began that the couple broke up because Scott had a mistress the entire time. As Metro reports, fans of the A-list duo started noticing Instagram model Roji and Carr would share photos from locations that Scott was in immediately after he posted his own snaps. And in March 2019, Metro states, Carr reportedly shared a screenshot showing that Kylie had blocked her on Instagram, writing, How many times a day do you block and unblock me, girl? According to E! News, by the time Jenner and Scott officially split, Carr denied being the other woman, taking to her Instagram story to set the record straight. None of the rumors are true. But a few weeks later, Carr posted another story claiming that Jenner had, quote, silenced her and that, I wish the truth would just reveal itself. It's just sad to see how someone with all that money and fame is still concerned with little insignificant me. The Kardashian-Jenner girls have promoted their hourglass figures for as long as they've been in the spotlight. Kylie Jenner is known for following in her sister's footsteps, regularly seen in form-fitting looks that leave little to the imagination. And with all the photos Jenner posts online, she regularly faces backlash for altering her appearance. A 2017 mirror selfie attracted a lot of speculation as it showcased a very obviously warped wall behind Jenner. The reality TV star defended herself on Snapchat, claiming the wall was a curtain. We'll let you decide on this one, but she once even accused the Daily Mail of photoshopping her baby bump when she insisted she wasn't pregnant, even though she was. In July 2019, the Kylie Cosmetics founder found herself in hot water yet again with an Instagram photo of her and BFF Anastasia Stasi Karanikulau. Viewers observed that Karanikulau had one leg appear significantly thinner than her other one, a sign that Jenner may have altered her own leg to make it seem slimmer. One Instagram user commented, I'll come back and check this later when the rest of the legs finished uploading. Caitlyn Jenner's sons, Brandon and Brody, have been stalwarts of reality TV for over a decade. Between breakups, baby announcements, and The Hills' new beginnings, these two found themselves dominating headlines again in 2019. Let's take a look at some of the sketchy things everyone ignores about the Jenner brothers. Despite being part of the Kardashian-Jenner crew, Brody Jenner isn't necessarily a big fan of America's first family. According to Page Six, in April 2016, some of Brody's friends were overheard at Coachella congratulating the reality star on his family's recent successes, referring to the Kardashian side of his clan. He allegedly replied, They're not my f***ing family. Regardless of whether Brody actually publicly slated the Kardashians, apparently he was annoyed that his would-be plus one, then new girlfriend Caitlyn Carter, didn't get an invite to Kim Kardashian and Kanye West's wedding in Florence, Italy in May 2014. People are calling every day trying to get their plus ones invited, and mm -hmm. we just, the venue does not have the space. Brody threw shade at his relatives about the lack of a plus one when he allegedly wrote in a since-deleted Instagram post, Caitlyn Carter and I finally get to go to a wedding together. Kardashian herself appeared to respond to Brody's comments during an episode of Keeping Up With The Kardashians, saying, I don't know why Brody is still talking about this. We were very strict about our wedding. Everyone else respected that. It's not a big deal. We love our stepbrothers. It just seems like they are always talking about this divide. Yeah. And he asked to bring, you know, his girlfriends, yeah. and I said no. Obviously, that's not gonna happen. Can't the Kardashians just get along? The news that Brody had separated from wife Caitlyn Carter broke in August 2019, just over a year after the couple got married in a destination wedding at an exclusive resort off the coast of Indonesia in June 2018. 
Around a week after their split announcement, Carter was famously photographed kissing Miley Cyrus on vacation, shortly after the singer's own separation from her husband of just eight months, Liam Hemsworth. With snapshots of the two women spreading online, Brody decided to joke about the unexpected turn of events on Instagram. He captioned a photo of himself standing alone by the sea, don't let yesterday take up too much of today. His Hills New Beginnings co-star Brandon Thompson Lee commented on the post, let's round this scandal out and post a pic of us making out. Brody quipped in response, watch out, pics of Liam and I holding hands on the beach coming soon. Cyrus seemed less than impressed by the comment and shot back with, go take a nap in your truck and cool off. Basically, the singer wasn't here for any jokes at her expense, especially when Jenna brought Hemsworth into the mix. Brandon Jenner and ex-wife Leah Felder had been together for 14 years by the time they announced their breakup in September 2018 and were in a music duo together called Brandon and Leah. Just weeks after they were officially divorced in mid-July 2019, this Jenner bro shared that new girlfriend, Kaylee Stoker, was three months pregnant. With twins. You do the math. Brandon told People, We are at 12 weeks now, so near to the end of the first trimester. We're madly in love and we are very excited about this. Brandon already shares a daughter with his ex-wife and told People, Leah, Kaylee and I sat down with her and told her what was happening and she was very excited and happy. She's super excited to be a big sister. We love a happy blended family. Despite making headlines over their beautiful destination wedding in June 2018, it turns out that Brody Jenner and Caitlin Carter were never officially married. You know, we've, we've been together for a long time, so getting married was just the icing on the cake. According to a Page Six source, the union wasn't legal. It seems that these exes have avoided any potentially messy divorce paperwork. Remember the fuss Brody made over his lack of a plus one invite to Kim Kardashian's wedding? Well, the Hill star was also unhappy about most of the Kardashian Jenners skipping his own nuptials. He told People, my two little sisters, we never even heard from them. They never even RSVP'd, I don't think. We sent them an invite, but we just never heard anything back. I would have loved to have had them there. Meanwhile, Caitlyn Jenner also missed the wedding due to work commitments. But since Brody's marriage was never actually legal, perhaps it wasn't such a big deal after all. Just as Brody Jenner allegedly dissed his family connections, older Jenner brother Brandon isn't a fan of his famous last name. Hi feel like everything was given to me and that there's not a lot of things that I've earned in my life. In an interview with Channel Q Radio's Let's Go There with Shearer and Ryan in June 2019, Brandon revealed, When people hear it for the first time or they hear my last name, Jenna, I think that they're quicker to write me off and not necessarily even want to give my music a chance because of it. Basically, Brandon thinks that his super famous family connections may have hindered his musical success. As he revealed, Just the rise of Keeping Up With The Kardashians has changed the idea of what the last name Jenna, you know, what kind of person I'm going to be. Brody Jenner dropped a major bombshell regarding his relationships on the hills while speaking with Yahoo Lifestyle in 2015. Fans might have loved the chemistry between himself and Lauren Conrad, but their entire romantic tryst was apparently fake. He explained, I would say that the hardest part of it was having to live that fake reality, the not being able to say, I didn't screw every girl on the show. The reality TV star also opened up about his so-called fairy tale connection with Comrade and said, Lauren is a dear friend of mine and it was pretty funny having to live that reality. We would literally film a scene of us kissing or being in this lovey-dovey scene and right after it would be like, cut! And right after it be like, hey, it's good to see you! And then we'd go our separate ways. Reality TV just breaks our hearts again and again. During Brody Jenner's on-air with Ryan Seacrest interview in 2015, then-girlfriend Caitlin Carter participated in a phone-in and appeared to make some pretty major revelations about the reality star's love life. When Seacrest asked whether it bothered her to hear about Brody's previous romantic escapades, Carter replied, I knew what I was getting myself into when we first started dating, so that was sort of something I had to <laughs> accept from the beginning. Seacrest proceeded to ask Carter how many girls the Hill star had actually slept with. Carter revealed, it's more than a hundred. It's unclear whether or not this was a joke. For his part, Jenna was visibly embarrassed with his own girlfriend suggesting such a high number, but also said that they were very honest with one another. While the number isn't in itself a problem, the fact that he's lost count seems a little shady. 
Caitlyn Jenner's gender transition journey was well documented on TV shows Keeping Up With The Kardashians and I Am Kate, both of which show how the former Olympian's children reacted to her coming out as transgender. However, fans in the Twitter sphere were less than happy when Brody Jenner misgendered Caitlyn while jokingly wondering whether her name was inspired by his then-wife Caitlyn Carter's moniker. During the series premiere of The Hills New Beginnings in June 2019, Brody said, my dad, he also became a woman. Don't want to forget about that one. I had been dating Caitlyn Carter for four and a half years, and my dad came out and said that he wanted to be called Caitlyn. So Caitlyn's. Caitlyn's preferred pronouns are she and her, so Brody's incorrect use of pronouns made the reality star seem a bit tone deaf. However, Brandon jumped to his younger brother's defense amid the ensuing backlash on Channel Q Radio's Let's Go There with Shira and Ryan and said, Accidents happen and people slip up and you shouldn't shame them for it. There's not an ill intention. Bruce was harboring some secrets and some things that none of us knew about. Brandon also explained that errors should be teachable moments, admitting, I do that even with my family. When my brothers and sisters slip up here and there, I do encourage them to use the pronoun that my dad would prefer. Fur. The musician went on to point out that Caitlyn has told her children that they can still call her dad. You gotta have a sense of humor about it. I'll say Bruce, I say Caitlyn, I say dad. We mess up all the time. Not all relationships last forever, but the tattoos some people get during said relationships often do. And while covering up or removing a regrettable tat is sometimes an option, Brody Jenner is apparently pretty comfortable with keeping his. During his two-year romance with Avril Lavigne, the reality TV star ended up getting several matching tattoos with the Canadian songstress, including having her name etched into his forearm. Despite breaking up in 2012, Jenner's ink was photographed as recently as June 2019, meaning that this this particular tattoo probably even outlasted his marriage to Caitlin Carter. According to the Daily Telegraph, Levine reportedly also got Brody's name tattooed on her body, while both celebs had matching lightning bolts inked on them. Brody Jenner is obviously pretty comfortable with the tattoos he got with his former flame. By all accounts, Brody Jenner's split from Caitlyn Carter appeared to be amicable. A statement released to Page Six announcing their breakup said, They love and respect one another and know that this is the best decision for their relationship moving forward. However, everyone is aware of just how quickly Carter moved on with Miley Cyrus, with photos of the pair kissing surfacing shortly after the Jenner-Carter breakup was announced. So when Jenner went public with his new girlfriend, Josie Canseco, so soon after his ex's fling was revealed, was the reality star trying to send a message? A source told In Touch Weekly in August 2019, If you didn't know better, you'd think Brody and Josie were dating for some time now. The publication also noted that Canseco had left a flirty message on one of Jenner's Instagram posts on August 11th, just nine days after the announcement of Brody's split from Carter. Could it be that Jenner wanted the world to know that he'd moved on too? Jenner and Canseco sadly ended their romance in October 2019, with an insider telling E! News, Brody basically broke it off with her because it was getting too serious, and he didn't want the pressure of a new relationship. While the exact timeline appears to be a little fun, it's certainly convenient that Jenna coupled up at almost the same time as Carter and Cyrus did. Was it really just a coincidence? Viewers of The Hills New Beginnings will be well aware of the ups and downs that Brody Jenner and Caitlyn Carter experienced throughout their time on the show. And it seems that Jenner is perfectly happy for his breakup to be broadcast on television too. Speaking to Entertainment Tonight in October 2019, Jenner said of his separation from Carter, I'm sure you're going to see a lot of that on the show. He also suggested that he's focused on ensuring everyone watches the reboot of the reality show that made him famous as he teased, Of course you have to stay tuned to see what goes on with that, but you'll definitely see some of that. Jenna also told Entertainment Tonight, The Hills was one of those things where it's tough to put yourself out there like that, but ultimately it can be very therapeutic as well. Whether or not it's really cathartic to watch your marriage fall apart on television is anyone's guess, but there are some who think Jenna's attitude towards his ex is even more callous than he's willing to reveal. For instance, just a few months after their split, a source told In Touch Weekly in November 2019, Brody doesn't care about Caitlyn anymore. It appears that failed marriage is about to become reality TV fodder. We all know Caitlyn Jenner's kids Kylie and Kendall. So why have you never heard of Caitlyn's other secret children, like Bert and Casey? Keep watching to learn the truth.
Born in 1978, Burt Jenner is Caitlyn Jenner's first child from her marriage to actor Christy Scott, as per Sports Illustrated. The eldest Jenner offspring generally likes to keep things low-key. According to The Sun, he is a professional truck and race car driver and also owns several businesses, including a doggy daycare. In other words, he's not keeping up with the Kardashians, nor does he want to. He told Australia's Today that when it comes to the show, I don't watch it, it's just not part of my life. Yes, despite having superstar Caitlyn Jenner as a parent, Burt's made it clear that he had to pay his own way through life. He told Esquire, My dad's never helped me out financially in my life. I made it this far. Nobody's going to call me a daddy's kid. But he also told Today that he and Caitlyn have grown closer in recent years. She is a better person. Honesty is always the building block for any relationship. And at least we have that now. Caitlyn Jenner's second child from her marriage to Christy Scott, Cassandra Casey Marino, was born in 1980 and is Jenner's first daughter. Unlike her siblings, Marino is an incredibly private person and probably the quietest of all Jenner's kids. As per The Sun, she is married to Michael Marino and they have three children. Although the pair once had a fractured relationship, Marino told people that it has improved. My relationship with Caitlyn is much better than before she came out, but we still have a lot of work to do. We didn't talk for years, and now we see each other every couple of weeks and talk on the phone, which I am grateful for. She's happier and more appreciative of her family. She is trying harder, and there is a softness to Caitlyn that is new to me. I think part of that is that when someone is happier, they are just nicer. Following her divorce from Christy Scott, Caitlyn Jenner married actor Linda Thompson in 1981. Their son Brandon was born later that year. With ex-wife Leah Felder, Brandon Jenner was one half of indie group Brandon and Leah. During a Dig Mag interview with the couple, Brandon discussed having appeared on Keeping Up with the Kardashians with his then-wife, but emphasized the fact that reality TV isn't really his scene. We love making music. Reality TV, while it can be a nice boost to our audience, doesn't coincide with the lifestyle we have. We like to work on our craft. The two lifestyles kind of contrast. However, following Jenner and Felder's split in 2018, the indie group sadly dissolved. Speaking to people about his solo music, Jenner reflected on the limitations of having such a famous last name. I happen to be born into a family that was really well known. The fact that I have a recognizable last name, especially for what it's become recognizable for, has become a headwind that I've had to overcome. Caitlyn Jenner's second child with Linda Thompson Brody was born in 1983. It seems that reality TV runs in the Jenner blood as Brody rose to fame thanks to The Princes of Malibu, which also starred his brother Brandon, and The Hills, where he seemingly developed a romance with co-star Lauren Conrad. However, as noted by The Sun, Jenner and Conrad later admitted that they feigned the tryst for the sake of ratings. The Daily Mail reported that Conrad said, We had zero chemistry. It always just felt forced. In 2018, Brody found love when he tied the knot with a woman called Caitlyn, spelled with a K. Alas, it was not to be, with E! reporting that the couple called it quits in 2019. Brody highlighted the difficulties of divorcing in the public eye. He confessed during an episode of The Hills, New Beginnings, I think our relationship ran its course. After we had our split, it was obviously tough for both of us. It turns out that Caitlyn Jenner hasn't always been there for her sons. Brody opened up about Caitlyn's absence throughout his childhood during an episode of The Hills' New Beginnings. According to Brody, Caitlyn prioritized the Kardashian clan over her older kids. I didn't really grow up with my dad. When I was really little, we got to spend a little bit of time, but when she started the family with the Kardashian family and all that, I didn't really see much of her. The fractured relationship between Brody and Caitlyn reached its peak when she missed out on her son's wedding. The Sun reported that a so-called insider told them Brody tried to re-establish a family bond, but Caitlyn never responded much to calls or messages and always canceling, saying she had to work or attend an event, but demanding they always turn up to support her at events. Brody used to get so frustrated. Then, when Caitlyn canceled on his wedding, Brody was done. They haven't spoken in around a year now. Meanwhile, Brandon Jenner has echoed his little brother's claims. He wrote in an essay collection titled, To Me, He Was Just Dad, Stories of Growing Up with Famous Fathers. 
The effect of my parents' souring relationship was that I didn't see my father more than half a dozen times between the ages 8 and 25. From Arnold Schwarzenegger to, of course, former President Trump, Caitlyn Jenner followed a long list of celebs who ran for political office when she announced she had filed paperwork to enter the race for governor of California in 2021. Seeing as she's a Republican in a liberal-leaning industry, she was met with her fair share of criticism. But no one was quite as disappointed by Jenner's political ambitions as her own children. Fox News reported that Burt Jenner and his siblings were, quote, "...embarrassed by Caitlyn's run for governor of California." Burt made one veiled remark about it on Facebook before dropping off of social media. But TMZ reported that Brody and Brandon Jenner were also embarrassed by Caitlyn's run. So-called insiders told the site that her sons, quote, "...don't feel she's qualified for the position, and they strongly believe she shouldn't be mounting a campaign." On CBS This Morning, Caitlyn Jenner was asked about her family's involvement in her political ambitions. "...I did speak with all my children. I said, hey, I do not want one tweet. This is my deal. I said if anybody asks any questions in the media, just say no comment. Address your comments to me." I can take it. People have come after me all my life, you know, and I, I kind of just move on and do my own thing. The Jenner children need not worry, however, as Caitlyn lost monumentally in the election, barely managing to win 1% of the vote, which the Los Angeles Times attributed to her lack of support from the LGBTQ community. After marrying Kris Jenner in 1991, Caitlyn Jenner welcomed more children into her life. Through Chris, she is step-parent to Kim, Chloe, Courtney, and Rob, whose father, lawyer Robert Kardashian, died in 2003. Jenner's relationship with her stepchildren has been fraught at times. Kim Kardashian has clashed with Caitlyn Jenner on multiple occasions due to their differing political views. When Jenner ran for governor of California, The Sun reported that Kardashian would, quote, not be endorsing Caitlyn Jenner. A source told TMZ that, quote, Kim was not only disappointed, but disturbed by Caitlyn's politics. Kardashian, who believes in prisoner rehabilitation, took aim with Jenner's 2021 tweet, claiming that California Governor Gavin Newsom was, quote, "...releasing dangerous criminals back onto our streets." Regarding her relationship with Jenner, Kardashian has said that she loves her, but is disappointed by her increasingly right-wing views. Kardashian told Ellen DeGeneres in 2017, "...I'll always love her. That was my stepdad for so many years." She taught me about character and so much growing up, and I just feel like I don't respect the character that she's showing now." Meanwhile, in an interview with Pierce Morgan, Jenner admitted that she was no longer speaking to her four Kardashian stepchildren. "...I spent 23 years of my life with those kids. It's difficult to talk about it. Terribly, terribly sad. I've lost all relationship with them. Yes, I don't talk to any of them anymore." Ever since keeping up with the Kardashians catapulted former Olympian Caitlyn Jenner back into the media spotlight, where she undoubtedly enjoyed immense stardom as a result, the memory of her older children began to fade from public view. Subsequently, it appears that Jenner's older children have been overshadowed somewhat by those within the Jenner-Kardashian brood, as the Jenner appellation became synonymous with Kendall and Kylie. Caitlyn told Diane Sawyer on 2020, some of my children I have remained very close to. A couple of them? I'm a little more distant. I have to admit, I'll sit here and wonder, is it because of my transitioning? Or is it because their life is so busy that they don't call, like, all the time?" While her two youngest kids have been loving and supportive with regard to her transition, Jenner confessed that some of her children weren't too happy about her Vanity Fair cover, though she didn't name names. Jenner told Sawyer, "...I know, my kids that thought, you know what, it's a little too much. But from my standpoint, I had suffered for 65 years. To have a beautiful shot of my authentic self was important. And I wanted the shock value. I wanted to end the old Bruce, my old life. And that picture did it." Caitlyn Jenner welcomed her second daughter when Chris gave birth to their first child, Kendall, in 1995. Kendall Jenner is a highly successful supermodel, whom Forbes crowned the highest-paid model of 2017, with a whopping salary of $22 million. As if that colossal annual paycheck wasn't enough, Kendall launched her own tequila brand, 818, in 2021. 
with the spirits business noting that sales for the tequila reportedly topped early sales from other celebrity vanity tequila brands, from stars such as LeBron James and George Clooney. And of course, Kendall is also responsible for that notorious Pepsi ad. Needless to say, the Car Jenners aren't exactly known for their modesty. But unlike her siblings who bask in the reality TV limelight, Kendall claims to be a far more reserved and quiet person. She told WWD that she's actually not that big a fan of social media. I think I'm the most private out of my family. I don't need it to affect my life, so I'd rather just not look at anything. You can get a million comments about how beautiful you look and how awesome you are, but the one comment that says they hate you and you're ugly is the one that sticks. Born in 1997, Kylie Jenner is Caitlyn's youngest child. Known for being a popular makeup guru with a highly successful beauty line, Kylie Cosmetics, the youngest Jenner kid has created a multi-million dollar beauty empire. Although she was once tipped as the world's youngest billionaire, Forbes noted that Kylie is no longer deserving of that moniker following some financial pitfalls. Money aside, Kylie and Caitlyn share an extremely close bond. Kylie told Harper's Bazaar, my dad was the best growing up, never missed a sports game, took us to school every day, and our school was like 45 minutes from our house. As for how often she speaks to Caitlyn, Kylie said, like every day, except I couldn't talk to her for three or four weeks when she did that show, I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. I watched clips online. It was hard to be out of touch for that long, but I feel like it was harder for her because she couldn't see us. In 2018, a 20-year-old Kylie blessed Caitlyn with another grandchild when she gave birth to adorable daughter Stormy with an on-again, off-again boyfriend, rapper Travis Scott. The youngster may be barely out of diapers, but mom Kylie treats her to a designer wardrobe worth more than most people's annual salary. And in 2021, the makeup mogul announced via Instagram that she and Travis Scott were expecting their second child. When Caitlyn Jenner came out as transgender in 2015, gracing the cover of Vanity Fair with her glam new look, she received overwhelming praise and support. That year, she was honored with the Arthur Ashe Courage Award at the ESPYs, where she was greeted with a standing ovation before giving a moving speech about living one's truth. She said, if you want to call me names, make jokes, doubt my intentions, go ahead, because the reality is I can take it. But for thousands of kids out there, coming to terms with being true to who they are, they shouldn't have to take it. As she spoke, her daughter Kendall, sitting proudly in the audience, could be seen with tears in her eyes. Kendall told People, When my dad came out as transgender, our relationship grew. She could finally be honest with me. Because of my dad's bravery, I've learned to love what I love and not be ashamed of it. She's been my role model since before I can even remember. From sports growing up, to now with her wisdom. She's so brave, and I aspire to be as brave as her one day. There is arguably no greater gift for a parent than being dubbed their child's hero. Kylie Jenner has heaped mountains of praise on Caitlyn, declaring that she is both a hero and a role model. Kylie told People, My dad has always been an inspiration to me from winning the gold medal at the Olympics to getting her pilot's license. However, watching her live out her true self has been the most inspiring of them all. She's our hero. Following Caitlyn's coming out, Kylie emphasized Caitlyn's positive impact. Regarding Caitlyn receiving Glamour's Transgender Champion Award, Kylie said, She's lived an amazing life, and she's always done amazing things. She's such a good role model for so many people and I know she wants to do so much good with what she's doing. Kylie makes a vital point. Representation is important, and there's no doubt that Caitlyn Jenner's coming out was instrumental in highlighting trans visibility. As transgender rights activist Mara Kiesling told The Guardian, there are people all over America who have seen the Vanity Fair photos and said to themselves, you know, I am trans too, and I am going to have the courage to come out. And that feeling of adoration is mutual. Caitlyn gushed about Kylie when the reality star became a mother. Caitlyn told Us Weekly, Little Stormy is a wonderful little kid, and Kylie is a wonderful mom. She's totally dedicated to her. Kylie Jenner earned a bit of a bossy reputation in the KUWTK days, so much so that she tweeted in 2020, quote, I'm not bossy, I'm the boss. Perhaps Caitlyn Jenner agrees. 
Favoritism is, sadly, all too common within family dynamics, and there's no denying that Caitlyn and Kylie Jenner share an immense bond that is seemingly imperishable. Subsequently, Kylie's big sister Kendall appears to be relegated to the background at times. It is, after all, Kylie who features most prominently on Caitlyn's Instagram feed, with loving tributes to both the daughter and granddaughter Stormy. And Caitlyn pretty much confirmed what all eagle-eyed KUWTK stands had long believed. Kylie is her favorite. During an appearance on the Skinny Confidential Him and Her podcast, Caitlyn responded to a big question. When asked which Jenner kid she could, quote, see herself in the most, she confessed, Kendall and I have a lot in common, but Kylie and I just seem to be closer most of the time. Kendall's off kind of doing her thing, and Kylie like, I had dinner last night at Kylie's house, we try to do that once a week. To add the final nail in the coffin, Caitlin summed it up, and so, from that standpoint, we're a lot closer. Kendall's not that, she's always very kind of, a little bit more secretive. We're still very close, but it's kind of harder to figure out. Where Kylie's more of an open book. In a touching video for her YouTube channel, Caitlyn Jenner got daughter Kylie to do her makeup, and the pair discussed the importance of Caitlyn still being referred to as her children's dad. Kylie said, Sometimes people get really confused when Kendall and I still call you dad. Caitlyn revealed that this was in part by her own choice, stressing that being a father is a role, not a pronoun. I feel it was one of the best decisions I made. And sometimes this community can be pretty tough, uh, especially when it comes to pronouns and everybody's got an opinion. She went on to explain that no matter what her gender identity, she's still their dad. Some people say, oh, you're the mother. No, no, I'm not. I, I'm, I'm the dad. I've been the dad the whole way. Um, I will be their father until the day they die or I die. When discussing Caitlyn's coming out with WWD, Kendall Jenner had similar feelings toward the importance of still referring to her as dad. It would probably be different for someone who didn't have to live it through the media, but I've known since I was a kid. My dad is my dad. Here's hoping the future is bright for Caitlyn and her children. She once appeared on a Wheaties box, but no Olympic medal could get Caitlyn Jenner the kind of press she has now. Did she literally get away with murder? Here's why the woman who prefers to be called dad lights fires everywhere she goes. I, I gotta do it kind of my way, that, that works for me. And yeah. I think everybody out there has to do it their way. Totally. Which works for them. Early in Jenner's public life as a trans woman, she upset trans advocates with her remarks about the ability of certain trans people to pass or move through society undetected as trans. While it may be an impossible task for those with less resources, not every trans person wants to blend in. Emily Vanderwerf wrote for Vox, As trans people, we're supposed to complicate the gender binary, not uphold it. By trying my damnedest not to stand out but to blend in, I'm propagating a system that hurts both trans people and women disproportionately. When Jenner made Time Magazine's Person of the Year shortlist, she claimed she focused on her looks to put others at ease, adding, I think it's much easier for a trans woman or a trans man who authentically kind of looks and plays the role. If you're out there and, to be honest with you, if you look like a man in a dress, it makes people uncomfortable. If you're going to do that and come out, you really have to look the part. Attempting to manage the obvious pushback, she apologized in a since-deleted blog post, writing, People who look visibly transgender sometimes can struggle for acceptance and may be treated poorly by others. And while this may be true, it's also something that needs to change. In her early days as Caitlyn, Jenner made numerous allowances for anyone using her wrong pronouns and name. While it was her personal choice, as Vox noted, she is the highest profile trans woman in the country, and many were hoping she would speak up on behalf of the trans community. There are some things that you said that you might not realize are hurtful. In the article introducing Caitlyn to the world, Vanity Fair writer Buzz Bissinger repeatedly referred to her dead name and openly admitted to calling her dude and man. Instead of making it a learning moment, Jenner told Bissinger, I don't really get hung up. 
A guy came in the other day and I was fully dressed. It's just habit. I said, hi, Bruce here. And I went, oh, f it ain't Bruce. Since then, Jenner has continued to experience widespread misgendering and deadnaming since coming out, from everyone including Twitter trolls to Saturday Night Live. As ACLU lawyer Chase Strangio tweeted, When large platforms like SNL deadname and misgender trans people, it legitimizes the notion of transness as spectacle and fraud. It isn't funny. It is dangerous. When she sat down with Ellen DeGeneres, Jenner was asked about her previous lack of support for gay marriage. Claiming she now thought differently, she admitted that she was previously not on board. She said, If that word marriage is really, really that important to you, I can go with it, you know? DeGeneres noted that Jenner still seemed hesitant about her support, adding, Marriage is marriage and equality is equality. Years later, Jenner confessed to her Big Brother VIP Australia castmates that there may have been a better way to handle the Ellen Show question. But when DeGeneres then went to the media and misrepresented Jenner's answer, Jenner said she considered banning all of the Kardashian Jenners from appearing on Ellen as a result of her post-show treatment. Jenner launched her reality show, I Am Kate, as an opportunity to explore her identity. And she surrounded herself with trans advocates in an attempt to learn about her new community. But she often clashed with her co-stars, preferring to stick by her conservative views. Claiming that her friends were convinced she now had to become a liberal, Jenner said on the show, That I think uh, I can keep... Um all of my views the same, because uh, I feel in my heart that that's the best way to go." When writer and advocate Jenny Boylan asked Jenner to look into how some Republican policies hurt the trans community, Jenner refused. Jenner ultimately announced the show's cancellation on Twitter, writing, "...thank you, E, and thank you to the best girlfriends I could ask for." But many of the women on the show, including actress Jen Richards, have since distanced themselves from Jenner. Richards confessed, I think I've kind of given up on her. Fans of Keeping Up With The Kardashians know that Jenner remains close with her daughters Kylie and Kendall. And while her eldest daughter lives life out of the limelight, Jenner's relationship with her three sons appears strained. When she ran for governor of California in 2021, TMZ reported that she had only let her sons know the night before she went public with the announcement. And sources claimed that Brody, Burt, and Brandon Jenner felt she was unqualified to get into politics. The Jenner boys have also spoken in the past about their difficult relationship with Caitlyn throughout their lives. Claiming she was mostly absent, Brandon wrote in an essay via News.com, "...sadly, the infrequent exchanges felt more like staged photo opportunities than real bonding. In fact, they were staged photo ops for family Christmas cards." What I've learned is just to not expect too much from her. Brody claimed on The Hills' New Beginnings that he too felt distant from Caitlyn, explaining, "...when I was really little, we got to spend a little bit of time. When she started, you know, obviously with the family, the Kardashian family and all of that, I didn't really see much of her." It may be the Kardashian-Jenner way of life, but since her marriage to Kris Jenner ended, Caitlyn has possibly been a little too open about what went wrong. She told Vanity Fair of Kris, "...a lot of times she wasn't very nice. People would see how I got mistreated. She controlled the money, all that kind of stuff." But Kris felt the source of conflict was the fault of the opposite party. She responded, "...she was married to me and she wasn't who she wanted to be, so she was miserable. All I was doing was working very hard for my family so that we could all have a wonderful future, and she was pissed off." Did she tell you early on? No. Oh, I did too. Oh, yes. She keeps saying she told me, but she didn't. I Later, with the release of her memoir, The Secrets of My Life, Caitlyn once again sparked backlash from the family. She claimed to have previously told Chris about her struggle with her gender, which Chris denies. Caitlyn said they would likely always argue about who knew what when, adding, "...she insists that she was taken by surprise by my ultimate transition to Caitlyn. I told her there had been a woman inside me all my life." Of course, the family drama played out for fans. Everything she says is all made up. Why does everything have to be that Chris is such a bitch and 
In 2015, Jenner rear-ended another car while driving along the Pacific Coast Highway, sending the other vehicle into oncoming traffic. The victim, Kim Howe, was killed in the incident. Jenner released a statement at the time to E! News that read, It is a devastating tragedy, and I cannot pretend to imagine what this family is going through at this time. I am praying for them. According to the LA County Sheriff's Department, Jenner had been traveling at unsafe speeds, but CNN reported that no charges were brought against her. Still, according to the LA Times, a lawsuit from the victim's family was settled by Jenner for an undisclosed sum. Jenner received possibly the most backlash for voting for Donald Trump in 2016, the president who once banned trans people from serving in the military. Claiming she was pro-constitution and pro-freedom, Jenner also told Seth Meyers of Republicans, Now, as far as LBGT issues, I gotta keep an eye on these people. But by 2018, Jenner had written an op-ed for the Washington Post admitting to the damage of some of Trump's policies, adding, I was wrong. He has ignored our humanity. He has insulted our dignity. He has made trans people into political pawns as he whips up animus against us in an attempt to energize the most right-wing segment of his party. This is politics at its worst. It is unacceptable, it is upsetting, and it has deeply, personally hurt me. But when Jenner ran for California governor and needed to nab the conservative vote, she was back to talking up Trump. As she told Sean Hannity, he did some things that I agreed with, some things I didn't agree with. Though she claimed she didn't vote for Trump in 2020, she didn't actually vote at all. And she told Fox News that she would support him again if he ran in 2024. Jenner's coming out earned her the coveted Arthur Ashe Courage Award at the ESPYs in 2015. And as part of her emotional acceptance speech, she told the crowd, I also want to acknowledge all the young trans athletes who were out there, given the chance to play sports as who they really are. But a few years later, during her run for governor, TMZ questioned her about the debate over whether trans girls should be allowed to play on girls' teams. This time, Jenner had a different take. She said, This is a question of fairness. That's why I oppose biological boys who are trans competing in girls' sports and school. It just isn't fair, and we have to protect girls' sports in our schools. Soccer star and out lesbian Allie Krieger said she was surprised by the answer, telling Variety, I feel like every kid, including trans kids, should have the opportunity to play the sport they love to play. Jenner's stance evolved even further a few weeks later when she stated on America's Newsroom that when it comes to trans women who grew up as girls, Trans women who are truly trans, of course they should be able to compete in girls' sports. In 2021, in the midst of Jenner's political campaign, she flew to Australia. That meant she needed to be granted an exemption for the country's notoriously strict COVID-19 lockdown and quarantine rules. While this allowance might be expected due to her status as an active political hopeful, she drew considerable international ire because of her actual reason for traveling. Starring on the Australian version of Celebrity Big Brother, Big Brother VIP. As one might expect, the move caused a firestorm of controversy. Sky News host Paul Murray noted that some Australians were still stuck abroad more than a year into the pandemic due to the country's severe lockdown. He said, This is ridiculous. There are literally flights that are returning with zero people on them because of travel caps, but she can fly into the country. On the day the series cast was announced, Jenner revealed on Twitter that she had already been eliminated from the competition and was back in the US, making the whole thing feel extra pointless. But she still managed to make headlines anyway during her brief appearance, telling her housemates about her former friend OJ Simpson. Obviously, he did it. Comedian Dave Chappelle recently found himself in hot water over the transphobic comments he made in his Netflix special, The Closer. In it, he announced he was Team Turf, aka trans exclusionary radical feminist. And he also made jokes about a late trans woman he claimed was a friend. Amid the furor, Chappelle visited his old high school in November 2021, where students claimed he was a bigot and that his rants were responsible for the death of trans people. Variety reported that he responded with, 
I'm better than all of you. Chappelle blamed cancel culture for the hubbub, and just as predictably, Jenner leapt to his defense. She tweeted, This isn't about the LGBTQ movement. It's about woke cancel culture run amok, trying to silence free speech. We must never yield or bow to those who wish to stop us from speaking our minds. Like many on Twitter, writer Danny Stewart disagreed with Jenner's stance, posting, You don't speak for me or any other trans folks I know. Caitlin, you need to soul search. When you're getting compared to Disney Channel characters on multiple occasions, you might want to rethink your outfits. From ableism to design theft accusations, Kylie Jenner's most controversial fashion moments aren't exactly fashionable. Showing up to an event wearing the exact same outfit as someone else can be pretty embarrassing, but when it happened to Kylie Jenner, it was a little more than just awkward. As she said in the front row at Scaparelli's SS23 Couture Runway Show during Paris Fashion Week in 2023, model Irina Shayk strolled right by her wearing an identical black gown with a huge fake lion's head affixed to the front. Social media users had a field day roasting Jenner over the surreal style moment. Jokes about Aslan the Lion from Narnia meeting a cruel fate flooded Twitter, though some critics didn't see this as a laughing matter. Other models wore fake foam wolf and snow leopard heads, which led to animal rights supporters accusing Scaparelli of promoting big game hunting and glamorizing the use of real animal products in fashion. However, PETA president Ingrid Newkirk voiced her approval of the designs, which were a nod to Dante's Inferno. As she told TMZ, these fabulously innovative three-dimensional animal heads show that where there's a will, there's a way. One of the most divisive style decisions a celebrity can make is to wear apparel made from real fur, which Kylie Jenner has done on more than one occasion. In 2019, for example, she and her bestie, Stasi Kara Nikulau, posed on Instagram wearing coats in cartoonish shades of blue and orange. The garments looked like Saks Potts designs, which would mean that they were trimmed with real fox fur. Some commenters called them out for animal cruelty, while others joked that their color choices made them look like Harry and Lloyd from Dumb and Dumber. Uh, you guys! Enough! Jenner angered animal lovers again in 2020 when she claimed to care about her furry friends by sharing a post on her Instagram story lamenting the deaths of millions of animals in wildfires ravaging Australia. But mere hours later, she modeled a pair of $1,480 Louis Vuitton slippers covered with mink fur, prompting critics to accuse her of blatant hypocrisy. As one person tweeted, Kylie posting her mink fur sandals right after her koala's dying post is peak fake woke behavior. Jenner then responded to the controversy by donating $1 million to aid wildfire relief in Australia. Kylie Jenner and her sister Kendall share a passion for fashion, so it seemed like a no-brainer for them to create their own clothing line together. In a 2015 interview with Teen Vogue, Kylie revealed, We're taking in a lot of different inspirations these days from the fashion world, but our California aesthetic will always be represented. Alas, some fans weren't feeling the California love when the siblings decided to incorporate images of late rapper Tupac Shakur into their designs. In a move that outraged and confounded critics, the Jenners released a collection of t-shirts with their own likenesses printed over those of various musicians. One superimposed image inexplicably featured an Instagram snapshot of Kylie posing on the edge of a pool and a shirtless photo of Tupac, and Kendall's face covered pictures of Tupac and the notorious B.I.G. on another tee, prompting one person to tweet, Tupac and Biggie did not f***ing die to be printed on a shirt with Kendall and Kylie. Kylie then tweeted an apology that read in part, We are huge fans of their music and it was not our intention to disrespect these cultural icons. But this didn't prevent the Jenners from being sued by the photographer who took the pics of Tupac. The lawsuit was ultimately reportedly settled out of court. What's your spirit animal? Tupac Shakur. In 2019, Kylie Jenner scored an invite to Justin and Hailey Bieber's wedding. The bride enlisted off-white founder Virgil Abloh to design her lace wedding gown, which featured a dramatic train, long sleeves, and an off-the-shoulder neckline. The model's Instagram followers were obsessed with the dress, with one admirer describing Hailey as the most beautiful bride ever. Alas, some fashion fans felt that Jenner tried to upstage Hailey's dreamy bridal look by rocking a sexy one-shoulder gown in gold. It was a jeton couture design that featured a revealing cutout on the bodice and a wide front slit that bared most of her thighs. 
She also paired it with slinky gold Stuart Weitzman sandals and carried a bejeweled Judith Lieber couture handbag shaped like a butterfly. The fashion police came out in full force not because they thought the gown looked bad, but for quite the opposite reason, with the consensus being that Jenner was a stone-cold glamazon. As one person quipped on Twitter, "'Show up to my wedding looking like Kylie Jenner at Hailey and Justin Bieber's wedding and you will be escorted out, lol." Others suggested ways for Hailey to get revenge on Kylie for stealing her shine on her big day, as one observer tweeted, "'Hailey has to give birth at Kylie's wedding because I wouldn't take that.'" When Kylie Jenner hit the red carpet at the 2022 Met Gala, she looked like she was ready to get hitched and hit the ballpark. That year, attendees were asked to dress in gilded glamour and white tie. While it seemed like a more suitable occasion for the gold gown that she wore to Hailey Bieber's wedding, Jenner rocked a white wedding dress instead. It was a frilly confection with a ruffled skirt and a t-shirt-style mesh top fused with a more traditional sweetheart bodice, and on her head she wore a backwards baseball cap with a fishnet veil. The look perplexed many observers, with one tweeting, "'Kylie Jenner's Met look is exactly what I imagine they would have the star of a Disney Channel original movie wear to a fictional Disney Universe Met Gala.'" Jenner explained on Instagram that her outfit was an homage to off-white CEO Virgil Abloh, who died in 2021. As she put it, "'I'm humbled to wear this dress and honor my talented, beautiful friend.'" This crucial detail actually made some folks warm to the look, though one unimpressed person tweeted, "'Kylie, honey, Virgil would have told you to wear something else.'" Here we go! I'm so happy! In February 2017, Kylie Jenner began offering black sweatsuits featuring flame graphics at one of her pop-up shops in New York City, but this apparel looked familiar to some fashion fans, as the independent label Cake Asia was already selling similar sweats. Jenner even used the same musician model that Cake Asia did in her promotional campaign, Rapper Offset. Seventeen magazine poured some water on the flame controversy by sharing images of comparable designs from other brands, making it difficult to discern who, if anyone, was getting ripped off. However, Jenner found herself under fire again just a few months later. This time, she added some merch to her online store that may have looked familiar to Destiny's Child fans — colorful camouflage crop tops, bikinis, and pants. As it turned out, the indie apparel company Plugged NYC released a similar collection first. Now, two brands using a popular pattern like camo could easily be viewed as a coincidence. But the designer who created Plugged NYC's pieces, Tacita Balamle, had receipts in the form of email evidence proving that Jenner had purchased garments from Plugged NYC before dropping the similar looks. Balamle released a statement to Complex that read in part, "'Money is power and the Kardashians have both. At the end of the day, this will be all blown over tomorrow. Her sales will continue.'" In June 2017, Kylie Jenner was ruthlessly mocked after modeling an unusual top on Instagram. It was a Harley Davidson sweatshirt, but most of the branding was gone. It was cropped at the armpits, and the jagged hem made it look as though it got caught in the wheel of a motorcycle and yanked back out. Unless you call Jenner a poser for paying homage to a brand beloved by biker gangs, she had actually sat astride a motorcycle before on Instagram, and she also rode one on an episode of Life of Kylie. While Jenner was clearly going Going through a phase of fascination with the fast machines, fans just couldn't get behind this hacked-off sweat top. It certainly didn't help that she paired the shirt with a tank and distressed jeans that also looked like they'd been through the ringer, with the huge holes on the thighs exposing the lining of her pockets. As one of her Instagram followers quipped, "...when you don't know if it's gonna be hot or cold." The top was reportedly designed by a brand that upcycles old pieces to create eco-friendly looks, so Jenner was at least doing her part to help the environment by wearing a sweatshirt as a necklace. You can't just let your hair down. When Kylie Jenner was profiled by Interview Magazine in 2015, the then 18-year-old was promoting her anti-bullying campaign. She also spoke about the darker side of fame, saying that she's so fearful of being viewed in a bad light that the first thing she does upon waking up is check the internet for any negative headlines that mention her name. After the article was published, she actually had to experience her worst nightmare, as she was lambasted for agreeing to pose in a gold wheelchair on the cover. People who actually use wheelchairs for mobility as opposed to fashion accessories were outraged. Erin Tatum, who has cerebral palsy, recreated the photo on Tumblr and shared her thoughts in an interview with Self Magazine. As she put it, "...it's absurd that real-life disabled people get hardly any attention or recognition, but celebrities feel entitled to appropriate disability as some kind of artistic statement. You almost never see disabled models." 
Social media users also scolded Jenner for being ableist, tone deaf, and insensitive. In response to the backlash, Interview issued a statement to E! that said in part, Our intention was to create a powerful set of pictures that get people thinking about image and creative expression, including the set with the wheelchair. But our intention was certainly not to offend anyone. Kylie Jenner has a lot in common with Rihanna. Both women have launched successful makeup brands, and they both have massive Instagram followings. They've also both been romantically linked to rapper Travis Scott. But their similarities have also aroused suspicions. In 2019, Page Six tweeted side-by-side -side photos of the two wearing the same leopard print Laquan Smith catsuit. Rihanna wore it first during an interview magazine photo shoot, while Jenner followed suit a month later, showing hers off in a shadowy mirror selfie. In response to Page Six's tweet, one fan shared other examples of Jenner apparently stealing the singer's style. Two different designers who crafted strikingly similar fringe jumpsuits worn by Rihanna and Jenner even got embroiled in a legal battle in 2017. Five years later, Vogue shared photos of Jenner and Rihanna both rocking black leather coats over gossamer lace dresses. But ultimately, who can blame Jenner for wanting to be like someone as iconic as Rihanna? We know the system, we have the firepower, and we have each other. You ready? During Paris Fashion Week in 2023, Kylie Jenner styled a figure-hugging, electric blue Givenchy dress in a manner that sparked a bit of controversy. Her glittery pink shark lock boots were also a Givenchy design. Some critics weren't fans of the footwear, which resembled the bottom of a pair of flared pants over pointy-toed shoes. As one of her Instagram followers wrote, I feel like those are shoes Hannah Montana would wear. Pause, we niblets. Others blamed one of Jenner's accessories for spoiling her look, as her silver Givenchy necklace was designed to look like a noose. After the accessory made its runway debut at Paris Fashion Week in 2021, critics pointed out that the noose is a symbol of hate due to its use in the lynchings of black Americans. Furthermore, it can also be triggering for those whose lives have been impacted by suicide. When The Guardian reached out to Givenchy for comment, the label wouldn't explain or defend the noose design, saying instead, the house do not have an official response on this. In 2019, Kylie Jenner threw a birthday bash for her friend Stasi Karanikulau and chose a theme that prompted a fair bit of outrage. Jenner and her guests were dressed in blood-red robes and white bonnets like those worn on the Hulu series The Handmaid's Tale, which is based on Margaret Atwood's dystopian novel of the same name. The characters on the show who wear the red habits are handmaids who are enslaved, raped, and forced to give birth. On our Instagram story, Jenner noted, The Handmaid's Tale is my favorite show ever. Since the show's debut, the red handmaid costumes have become associated with resistance to laws that oppress women, thanks to protesters who wear them as a stark warning about what can happen when women's rights are stripped away. But one of the stars of the show, Bradley Whitford, didn't believe that Jenner was trying to make a meaningful statement. As he put it on an episode of The Talk, it seems a little tacky. A cocktail party seems to sort of dash all that significance. Social media users also had thoughts about Jenner's little get-together in Gilead, with one person tweeting, Nothing says fun like dressing up as women who are habitually raped and denied basic human rights. In September 2022, Kylie Jenner attended Acme Studios' SS23 fashion show in Paris and wore a dress designed by the label that hadn't hit the runway yet. She took her front row seat and watched a model glide down the runway, rocking the same dramatic white gown. Jenner helped demonstrate the dress's versatility by styling hers with a pair of spiked earrings for a punk rock vibe. The floor-length garment hugged Jenner's curves, and when she posed with her arms down, it almost appeared as though a long cape was draped over her back. However, she gave her Instagram followers a better look at exactly how the dress was designed by sticking her arms out to the sides and placing her hands on the walls of a hallway. This revealed that the loose folds of fabric were attached to the gown's sides and long sleeves, making her resemble a sugar glider in flight. To many of her followers, the look was giving off bedsheet vibes. Others joked that she was engaging in a little culinary cosplay, with one suggesting that she looked like a ravioli. Bon appetit! For her Halloween costume in 2015, Jenner wore a white crop top with a fur-trimmed hood, a matching miniskirt, and a pair of furry boots. On Instagram, she described the outfit with the term that's considered derogatory towards Inuit people. In general, the term is considered offensive because it was commonly used by colonizers, who viewed the native inhabitants of Arctic areas as dangerous heathens. Jenner eventually changed the caption of one Instagram post to describe her costume as a snow princess, so she evidently noticed that she was getting called out. However, she didn't remove the same derogatory word from a video showing off her glittery makeup. 
and she used the term again in a 2016 Facebook post, revealing that the Halloween costume had been added to the Kendall and Kylie mobile game. In the comments, one of her followers replied, I'm Inuit. Eskimo is a derogatory term to us. Not all, but we do not dress like that unless we want to be found dead in a snowbank. Please don't dress like us as a f***ing Halloween costume. In August 2022, Kylie Jenner took to Instagram to show off an outfit that probably had more than a few of her followers doing a double take. At first glance, it was just a simple bubblegum pink long-sleeved top paired with a black miniskirt, but upon closer inspection it appeared that two pairs of hands were grabbing her torso and hips. As reported by E!, the garments with attached gloves were vintage 2007 Comme des Garçons pieces. When creative director Rei Kawakubo sent the looks down the runway, she told Vogue, I'm tired of mundane, everyday fashion. I'm curious. I want something that takes us to another world. But Jenner wasn't journeying through the looking glass to Wonderland when she rocked the surreal outfit. Instead, she was just visiting London with her daughter Stormy. Some of Jenner's Instagram followers were a bit freaked out by her handsy ensemble, with one person pining, "'Like everything about you, Kylie, but this dress made me nervous.'" Then there were those who didn't seem interested in getting their hands on the outfit because it wasn't fashionable enough for their tastes, as one person sniffed, "'This looks cheap and tacky for a woman of her wealth.'" If Jenner ever wants to block the haters out by covering her eyes and ears, those extra hands will surely come in handy. Talk to the hand. In December 2022, Kylie Jenner shared an early Christmas gift with her fans in the form of an Instagram photo that was just too easy for them to roast. She was rocking a sparkly, multicolored outfit designed by Y Project. It included a slinky, long-sleeved maxi dress and coordinating balaclava. She modeled this unusual ensemble by striking a pose on a bed along with the caption, waiting for Santa, like… But some wisecracking fashion critics thought that she looked more like she was ready for Halloween, with one quipping on Reddit, what in the sleep paralysis demon? I guess I'm too poor to understand fashion. Another Redditor declared, it's giving ghostly apparition on paranormal investigation thermal camera. There was also a suggestion that Jenner was taking a page from Halloween Queen Heidi Klum by rocking her own more colorful take on a worm. Or perhaps the influencer was just getting desperate for cash, with one comment suggesting, "...when you have a bank robbery at 3 and a Balenciaga shoot at 5." While speaking to Marie Claire in 2016 about her status as a trendsetter, Jenner boasted, "...I just do whatever I want to do, and people will follow." But does she wield enough power to get her fans to start dressing like the Predator's doomed prey? 